Hello and welcome to my channel IELTS Listening. Let's start with one of the best practice tests for improving listening skills. Now look at part one. Part one. You will hear a student phoning to inquire about a car for sale. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, can I speak to... Uh, the advert doesn't give a name. Well, the name is Bob, and I guess this call is about the car I'm selling, right? Yes, my name's Francis, and I'm definitely interested. You'll like my car then. Clean, neat, nice. What sort is it? Oh, the original model was called an Echo. You know, like the Echo a sound can make. But then they changed the name to Yaris, just before I bought it. Yaris. I don't know why. I liked the old name, and it's the same car, but that's what it's called. So, what's the colour? The ad says it's cream-coloured. Like cream, then? Yeah, well, it, it's more of a yellow colour, actually. Not cream? No, I don't know why I said that. It's like a canary, and it's more like one, too. So, what about the power? How many cylinders does it have? Four or six? My brother has a six-cylinder car and says it's very powerful. Well, this one's four only, but I find it fine for city driving. As long as you don't intend to drive this car interstate or across the country, it does the job fine. That's OK. I just want the car basically for commuting to work and maybe some weekend trips. Is it two-door or four-door? I suppose it's not four-door. The car's too small for that, right? Right. Just two doors, as you say. The front seat bends forward to allow entry into the rear. That's fine by me. This car is just for my girlfriend and I anyway. Uh, what about accessories? Radio, CD player, anything else? Does it have an air conditioner? Well, no, it doesn't, but I don't find that a problem. I just open the window. I mean, if you really want, you can pay to have an AC installed. Basically, the only additional feature this car has is a radio, but it's still a great deal. That depends on the price. You say you want $12,800, right? Yep, about that. Well, obviously you expect the price to be reduced to an even figure, right? Well, I don't know. $12,000. $12,500, maybe. If you can lower it a bit, I'll come and have a look, OK? OK, OK. Let's say $12,400. But I won't lower it any more than that. Certainly not to $12,000. Well, if I can get that better price, I may come over this afternoon. But what year is this car? How old is it? My brother's got a 12-year-old car and it's showing problems. Well, my car was brand new only three years ago, but it still looks like it's only been one year on the road. OK, that sounds good. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Can I just ask a few more general questions about this car you're selling? Sure. Can you just tell me why you think it's such a good deal? Of course, I won't necessarily believe you, but just tell me what you think. You can believe me. I honestly think this is a nice car, well worth buying at the price I'm asking. How much rego registration does it have left? Oh, uh, to be honest, 
not so much, but I think having lots of registration is irrelevant. It's the car you're paying for, the quality and advantages of the engine itself. Well, what about that then? OK, many people like to accelerate down the freeways, right? There are a lot of speed demons out there who think quickness is all that matters, but basically, people are mostly trapped in city traffic, so one of the things I like is that because this car is small, you can put it anywhere. Say you're in the city, wanting to duck into a shop. Well, you can fit this car in any little space while you go shopping or do other things, and that saves you a lot of time. Yeah, but it's not that powerful, right? Oh, sure, the feel of a smoothly purring six-cylinder engine attracts many people, but I compare my car to those small football players with the tight turning circles, those who can run rings around the larger players. This car is like that. It can turn this way and that way, dodge here, duck in there, sneak around corners, squeeze ahead and grab a position. That's also very useful when travelling in city traffic. OK, I'll think about it. Sure, think about it. But all these advantages are sound and appeal to other buyers as well. No one holds the same car forever, so you can say exactly the same things that I just said when you want to sell the car. That will make it very easy for you to pass this car on to the next buyer. Yeah, maybe you're right. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear an accommodation officer telling students about different halls of residence. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, and welcome to Stanton University. I'm here to tell you about the various halls of residence we have available, should you choose to come here. We aim to offer accommodation in halls to all first-year students, and you'll find there's a good variety to choose from. First of all, there's Brown Hall, which, as you'll see, is not the most modern of buildings, but it is very popular with some students. It's got a good sense of community, some nice refurbished kitchens, and unlike the other halls, it has recently had a gym built in its basement. Another option is Blake Residence, which is built like a large house, and so everybody cooks and eats together. It has its own sectioned-off bit of private garden, and is even more peaceful because this is an all-girls residence. Although, of course, boys are allowed to visit the hall, and, uh, I understand, frequently take part in cooking dinner. The largest hall we have is Queen's Building, and this has been upgraded recently. The original parking area has been built on so that the hall now has a large common room, and each bedroom now has its own shower room, which many students regard as a real bonus. A further option is the Parkway Flats, which won an award for design in its day. And this building now has a preservation order on it. This has meant that only a limited amount could be done to upgrade it, and the surrounding area is important, so parking is not permitted around the flats. 
However, the flats do have many extra facilities, such as a special computer room, a small library, and a self-service restaurant. The cost of breakfast, lunch, and dinner is covered in the fees for this hall, so it does look a bit more expensive. The last residence we can offer you is Temple Rise, which again is slightly more expensive than other halls as the rooms are larger. This has got very lovely views across to the coast, and this more than compensates for the fact that bathrooms here are shared between six students. However, the hall has domestic staff who clean the rooms once a week, so this is perhaps an attractive option for the messier amongst you. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20. Now, if I can just show on this wall map here where they all are, uh, you might like to go and have a look round. If you come into the main university entrance, at the first junction, you'll find that Brown Hall is on the corner opposite the theatre. So, you're nice and near the station here, though I think it can get a bit noisy with traffic. The same applies to Blake Residence, which is directly facing the junction to the university entrance. These halls are often used by medical students and such like, as they're out all day, so don't notice the noise. Anyway, if you then walk along Campus Road towards the main circle, you'll see the library on the corner, and Queen's Building is just past that as you head north. You will find that it is quieter here, and you may get fewer visitors. By the way, the circle is quite a feature of the campus, as it's set into the hills and has a brand new sports centre in the middle. It's worth going to look around it. Now, the Parkway Flats are on the opposite corner to the library, facing the circle, as you head towards the main buildings. The main buildings are only about a five-minute walk from here, and places in these halls go quickly, so my advice is to reserve your place as soon as possible. Then, Temple Rise is inside the circle, next to the sports centre, but further from the main university buildings. Now, if you'd like to go off and physically... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a student union officer explaining about the union's functions and services to a group of new university students. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello everyone. 
Now, here you all are, new university students, and the first question you probably have is, what is a student union? Another question is, do I have to join? Well, regarding this second question, let me say that membership used to be compulsory in the past, but that did cause some controversy, particularly from students who wanted to remain free and unaffiliated, and this university responded, so joining up is no longer compulsory. It's totally up to you, although I'll admit there is a fairly strong obligation to join since all students benefit from the large variety of services that we offer. We do understand, however, that many might be unwilling to join because of a supposed political slant to the union. Traditionally, student unions have been seen as being dominated by the left and I suppose that's still true to a large extent. Here, however, at this university, our union discourages such one-sided viewpoints and students across the whole political spectrum are welcome. Thus, if you feel that you are a conservative type, in other words, leaning to the right, you are particularly urged to join to provide a more balanced representation. Now, let me move back to the first question. What are we? We are a formal organisation, but totally independent of the educational body. We make our own rules, rent our own premises and organise ourselves as we wish. And our mission is basically to help you. For example, do you remember how you all arrived in late February to have an orientation week? That gave you an invaluable induction into life here, right? Well. The student union organised all the festivities at the end of that. The barbecues, partying and drinking and even the musical entertainment as well. We'll do that again on occasions and, as always, those events take place on the football ground. Now, do you have any questions before I move on? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Now, let me tell you more about the Student Union and its basic functions. In general, there are three, social, organisational and representational. Let's look at the first one. Basically, the union provides many social outlets for you to relax and have a better life at university. If you go to our union office, you'll find a list of the many clubs and societies we have, where you can make many friends with people who share a common interest. So, after class, sit with them in the cafeteria and discuss whatever takes your fancy. We also maintain sporting facilities and even our own gym, allowing you to relieve some of that pressure and worry after a particularly hard session in the classroom. And we have some small shops and other places where you can buy clothes and sporting gear, in other words, some retail outlets. And if you flash your student union card, you'll get up to 20% discount at the bookshop. But unfortunately, there are no discounts at the union cafeteria. Sorry, no cheap cappuccinos. Finally, there's a student union newspaper and you're welcome to contribute or put in advertisements if you're buying and selling goods or textbooks. You can also place notices of a more personal nature on the notice board of the union office itself. Alright, let's move on to our more serious functions which are helping you get through life here as well as representing you in times of trouble. Regarding the second issue, if you have a problem or a grievance, or if you feel under pressure or depressed for reasons both inside and outside the university, for example, perhaps a dispute with your landlord or the people in your local gym, 
Then come to us. We have a range of counsellors and helpers, and even some lawyers who you can meet in the conference room. So just sip a cup of tea or coffee with them and tell them your troubles, and they'll be all ears. Basically, there's every reason to join the student union, since whatever you need, whether it be social or representational, we will help you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear an environmental studies student giving a presentation about his project on saving an endangered species of plant. Now you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen and answer questions thirty-one to forty. For my presentation, I'm going to summarise what I've found out about efforts to save one plant species, the juniper bush. It once flourished in Britain and throughout the world's temperate zones, but over the last few decades has declined considerably. Before I go on to explain the steps being taken to save it in England, let me start by looking at some background information and why the juniper has been so important in cultural as well as ecological terms, historically and in the present day. Firstly, I want to emphasise the fact that juniper is a very ancient plant. It has been discovered that it was actually amongst the first species of plants to establish itself in Britain in the period following the most recent ice age, and as I say, it has a much valued place in British culture. It was used widely as a fuel during the Middle Ages, because when burnt, the smoke given off is all but invisible, and so any illicit activities involving fire could go on without being detected. For example, cooking game hunted illegally. It also has valuable medicinal properties, particularly during large epidemics. Oils were extracted from the juniper wood and sprayed in the air to try to prevent the spread of infection in hospital wards. And these days, perhaps its most well-known use is in cuisine, cooking, where its berries are a much valued ingredient. Used to flavour a variety of meat dishes and also drinks. Turning now to ecological issues, juniper bushes play an important role in supporting other living things. If juniper bushes are wiped out, this would radically affect many different insect and also fungus species. We simply cannot afford to let this species die out. So why is the juniper plant declining at such a rapid rate? Well, a survey conducted in the north and west of Britain in 2004 to 5 showed that a major problem is the fact that in present-day populations, ratios between the sexes are unbalanced, and without a proper mix of male and female, bushes don't get pollinated. Also, the survey found that in a lot of these populations, the plants are the same age, so this means that bushes grow old and start to die at similar times, leading to swift extinction of whole populations. Now, the charity Plant Life is trying to do something to halt the decline in juniper species. It's currently trying out two new major salvage techniques, this time focusing on lowland regions of England. The first thing it's trying is to provide shelters for the seedlings in areas where juniper populations are fairly well established. These, of course, are designed to help protect the plants at their most vulnerable stage. 
A further measure is that in areas where colonies have all but died out, numbers are being bolstered by the planting of cuttings which have been taken from healthy bushes elsewhere. Now, I hope I've given a clear picture of the problems facing this culturally and ecologically valuable plant and of the measures being taken by plant life to tackle them. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Dear viewers, thank you for taking this listening test. Please let me know about your score in the comments section below. Keep on practicing. It's the only way to be successful. We are planning to upload more IELTS helpful videos. Please subscribe to our channel, IELTS Listening. Thank you.